Okay, so this is sort of my technical dress rehearsal for one of the exercises that I'm going to be doing at Adobe Developer Week, where we build a web log using ModelGlue 2 or ModelGlue Unity really quickly. Um, we can start by creating a copy of the ModelGlue application template. Instead of copy, paste, search, and replace, we can just use an ant script to do that really quickly now. So by doing that, if I look at this blog directory, this blog project Eclipse, I've got a whole bunch of files created now for me. That's enough to get me from uh, absolutely nothing, virtual directory and listing error, to ModelGlue is up and running in absolutely no code at all. There's no compiling or deploying to do. Now to get a hello world message, just so we get through that exercise that everybody wants to see, all we do is change that little view fragment that is the sort of inner part of this page to hello world. And there we go, we're up and running. But we need to add some functionality. So I'm going to start by adding a, a post column to the database. We'll give it a primary key here. Um, we'll also give it a title. And that should be not null. All those good flags are set. Execute. And now I need to go write some UI for it. And model glue follows this popular concept, scaffolding. But ModelGlue is a front controller framework, so everything goes through one central index.cfm page. Um, so we don't add pages, what we do is we add new events. In this case, I'm going to add a bunch of events that are scaffolded based on this object called post. And now when I go back to my application, I can tell it to event equal post.list, and now I've got this list of posts, but I just lost that look and feel of my site. Well, for those of you used to writing ModelGlue applications, the new scaffold tag is its just like an event handler tag. You can have broadcast results and views right under it. So what I just did is I told ModelGlue to run the site-wide event template after it gets done doing the scaffold. It's going to apply all my CSS really nicely, both this page and all the other scaffolds there on post. Now if I click Save, it looks at the database and says, hey, that field's required, so go ahead and fill it out. So I'll say this is my first blog post. Click Save, and it'll drop me right back to the list, and we're going to see that it's showing up now. Um, now if I go back to the form, something here is obviously missing to be a, a good blog site. That's a body of post. So let's go back here. I will add a new column called body of type text. I'll apply those changes, tell it to execute the script. And when I reload, it's going to say, hey, that text is it's kind of a big field. So let's give a big box to fill it out. So this is a uh, second post. And into this field, I'm going to put the credits for everybody who helped me write model glue and click Save. And it'll drop me back to the list. So we've got the ability for titles and bodies now in posts. But it doesn't really look much like a blog. So if you look at the structure of our application, we have this folder called Views. And underneath that, there's a folder called Generated. These are all the little view fragments, sort of the view portion of this MVC concept. Um, that show the post and show the list of posts. I'm going to take those two and copy them into my base views directory. If I leave them generated, they're going to get overwritten each time I scaffold. If I put them in the base views directory, I can edit them to my heart's content. So I'm going to change the breadcrumb at the top of the list to just say add new post. And then we'll see further down, I've got this plain old vanilla CF output uh, query. And this first column here is the title, so I'm going to change it to be in H2 tags. And then I'm just going to, in P tags, put the body underneath that. This no new language to learn, no new crazy custom tags. It's just good old uh, full fusion like you're used to. Now in display post, I have a query. I have this object called post that I'm working with. So it's going to look a little bit differently. I'm, I'm going to put home here at the top, take us back home. And this is actually even easier. I'll say h2, post.getTitle, post.h2. And then um, in some key tags, I'll put post.getPipe. And I'll get rid of the rest of the page. And I can go back and reload my application. I didn't edit anything on the, on the model side or the controller side. I just changed what the layout was. This is complete separation of business logic from your presentation. So now everything looks the same. It's nice and consistent. So we've got a blog with some entries and some titles, but it doesn't have any comments yet, which is really what makes a blog a blog. So let's go to a comment table. Comment. Um, it's obviously the first column. Column is going to be comment ID. And what post is it for? The foreign key over that table. And then a, a body for that as well, so people can type in what they think about my blog entries. Apply, execute, close. Now I don't want to scaffold this. Instead, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and add a, a row or two in here, just for fun. I'll say edit. Uh, for that second post I did, put, those are great people. OK, that was fun. Apply changes. But I need to tell uh, my framework a little bit about the relationship between those two. So what I'm going to do is open this new file called reactor.xml. And what Reactor does is define all the relationships between my objects and generate the SQL to join all the tables together and things like that. So I'll say I have an object whose name is post. And this object does, in fact, has many objects whose name are comment. And to relate the two, I'm going to say relate from post ID to post ID. Okay, but there's a converse side to that relationship. And that is, uh, for a comment, we should have many posts or not have many, but have some sort of relationship, and that's a has one relationship. So I can now ask a post for all its comments, or I can ask any comment for its post. Which means that I can go back into my view for uh, a single post here. I can say CF set 
comments is equal to post.get comments iterator, which turns me into this uh, kind of nice interface for working with comments and objects. But I really just want the query that's underneath that. And then I can do a plain CF output query tag. I'm sure everybody's kind of used to doing that. And say, uh, buddy. And then the horizontal rule. And let's go to the top and put like a nice H2 in here. Or an H3 because we're down the lower level thing now. Add comments. I almost typed something but funny there. Um, oh, not add comment, but just add comments. Yep, that'll work. And if I go back to, to view this page and click reload, that comment that I entered is going to show up beneath my post automatically. I didn't write any SQL or any joins or anything like that. So I need to add a little bit more to let actual users add comments. So I'm going to put add comment down here. And we create a form. And the action that form is going to be that same index.cfm page everything goes through. But we're going to create our own event handler called comment.add for it. Um, input type equal hidden. Um, the name of it is going to be post ID, because we need to know what post we're talking about. And the value is going to be post.init post ID. I'm using a variable now, so I better see if output's whole block and uh, get the variables out there. Now let's create a text area whose name is body, because that lines up to the database column. Close that. Uh, throw in a breaking return, and then do input type equals submit value equal at comment. Okay, so uh, we've, got, we've got that kind of nice and working, but we don't have this event yet, which is comment.add. So we need to go into modelglue.xml and define that event handler. So say event handler, name is comment.add. And we have these things called broadcasts, which are sort of uh, the event handler stating that something's happened. In this case, we're going to broadcast a message that says we need a generic commit to go on. So message, uh, no, not message, but modelglue.generic commit, which is uh, a built-in message now. It has a message listener built-in in modelglue 2 or Unity. Um, that says take everything from form and URL and try to line it up with the columns of whatever table I tell you about and insert a row. So the so argument name is object and the value of that is comment. So I want to insert a new comment. Um, and now when this is done, I want something to happen. So I use a result. And I say, as a result of this happening, go to post.view and redirect over it. So hitting F5 and reloading the page doesn't keep adding things. And append a little bit to the URL, uh, append post ID to the URL. Yep, that'll work. So if I go back over and reload this page, I'm going to have my form show up now. And I can say, uh, yes, they are. Now I click Add Comment, and there's a bit of a lag time here as this happens for the first time. But it will happen, it inverts the row, and we see it show up right there. So if we want to get rid of this little bit of lag time, I can go into coldspring.xml, which is used to configure uh, services that my application uses. Model Glue is one of those services, and so is Reactor. So we have the Model Glue configuration and the Reactor configuration right here in this file. I can tell Model Glue to stop reloading on each page quest, so it doesn't restart the whole framework each time. And I'm also going to react to stop looking at the database, to move into production mode and stop looking for new columns. And now if I go home, it's going to take a moment because all those new changes take effect. But if I click this as my second post again, it goes really fast. Same thing with adding a new comment. Quick, add comment. See, there it is. It appears really fast because it's running this compiled cold fusion, ready to go. So right now we have our blog written, the ability to comment. We haven't written any SQL. The only thing we've really done is change some views and add a little bit form and a new event handler to add comments. Um, how fast was that? How easy was it? Didn't repeat ourselves much. So this is just a little sneak preview of what we're going to be doing at um, Adobe Developer Week 2006. If you'd like to see or read more about it, check out adobe.com and my blog, clearsoftware.net, and you'll find links to go register for the Model Glue at Cold Fusion session. Thanks. Have a good day. Oh yeah, that was 8 minutes and 43 seconds. How cool. Now you can see me fumble around my UI. Yeah, yeah.